What's up guys? Hope you're well. Hope everything's fun and fresh in your life. <laughs> New background, who is she? Who is she? I had a like a massive clear out of all my shit. Like so many clothes, bags, accessories, like you name it, it was in there. Apart from makeup, haven't sorted her out. So I've been given to charity and it just feels like, it just feels good, you know? Like I feel like my mind's a little bit clearer. By doing that though, I had to then organize everything else. This is kind of what I've come up with for now. I'm kind of working with what I've got. You guys know I still live with my parents. So it's kind of just, everything's in here and in there. And downstairs and look at I'm basically taking over the house. Um, listen, today we are back to painting our face. And I kind of just wanted to do something a little more chill. I thought it was about time that I did an update at like every day makeup routine. Every day, you guys know I don't wear makeup every single day. A lot of the time I'm not in makeup. But when I do, this has been my go-to. So it's go-to products. This is my go-to look. I'm an all or nothing girl. You guys know. So we've still got the coverage. Okay, we've still got a full sort of soft glam look going on. I have been doing things differently though. I've been doing that sort of fox cat eye look, fluffy brows, which of course is something different for me. Um, yeah, I've just switched up like techniques and the way things look, if you know what I mean. Been playing around. Kind of techniques that we can practice because we're in lockdown. Stew, four weeks later. So, yeah, um, I think I'll, mm, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> but this situation on my face right now, if you wanna know what I did, keep watching. Okay, like, I'm not even tripping. I think it's like 1 million degrees in my room right now. And before anybody says, just open a window, Jaws. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, I lived on a street with human beings. Um, so we can hear them all. Sun's out, guns out for a lot of... Lockdown's got people like living their best lives in their gardens. Um, so the things I do for you guys, honestly. Cheers to that. Right, makeup. At the moment, I've been doing my eyebrows slightly differently. I've been going for that nice, like, fluffy, feathery look. Whether it suits me or not, that's a whole other question, but we're out here doing it. This is what I've been using to do it. Now, I know well, some of you are probably thinking, like, are you sure? Jorts? <laughs> Schwarz... <laughs> Watch me try to say this. Schwarzkopf <laughs> got to be glued. Honestly, it's a really good hair gel. When I wear wigs and stuff, this is what I use to, like, glue it down. Like, that's how much this stuff will, like glue shit down. I take a Morphe E29 brush, which is just the brush with the spoolie and the angled edge. Just gonna take that first of all and just roughly brush them through with the spoolie. Kind of get some like in the position that I want and then get some of the glue, just like a small amount. And I'm just gonna start to comb that through my brows. Honestly, by doing this technique, I've noticed how thick my brows actually are. Like if I look on this side, I'm like, I've got a weak ass brow. Like what is that? <laughs> and then you wait when I start to kind of like transform this, it looks like a whole new brow. It's like the things you can do when you kind of do like a different routine. And then I use my finger to kind of just like flatten it down to make sure the hair's like stuck to my skin. Give that a second to dry. It's better when it's like starting to dry and going tacky. Cause then I find that I can actually like Stick her down. While this side is doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other brow. This side though, for me, the... What? <laughs> the end of my eyebrow, was it really that hard, Jordan? <laughs> I like to keep the hairs going down. So I brush this bit up and then the end down purely because I have one eyebrow higher than the other. And if I like brush it completely up, I kind of like permanently look confused. <laughs> Next thing, I just like to shape them. Run the spoolie over the top. They stay fluffy, but now they have a bit more shape. Before we add any product, um, I just like to carve them out. Carving them out kind of stops me like adding too much product and filling it in too much. That way I keep that like, this concealer I've been loving at the moment. It's by Maker Revolution. It's their concealer and define infinite long wear concealer. So it's their like daddy version <laughs> of the original. On a Morphe M421 brush. This is the color C1.75. It's a bit light, but hey ho. I shave off the tail of my eyebrows, by the way. Long story. <laughs> so I just sort of do a guideline where I want the tail to be. But you can see how much more like carved out and like how much of a brow that that looks just by doing that before I fill it in. Any sparse areas I fill in with my Benefit Foolproof Brow Powder in shade three. Then listen, if I'm feeling a little bit extra, okay? <laughs> you wanna add more definition, you need to pick this up. So it's by Ben, no it's not, it's by, uh, <laughs> this is by Evan Decay, this is their brow blade. So on one side you have like a pencil, on the other you have like a little ink pen. You can fake brow hairs with it. Zoom you in so that you can really see this bit. See that? No joke, this product is literally genius. And that's how I do like the fluffier brow. Keeping it real, I feel like this is a brow style that you either love or you hate. Some people might think it's too much. I, oh, okay, that was, 
a lot. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. I think it just makes everything look a bit more natural. Do you know what I mean? In like the best way. Okay, cool. Brows are done. So let's move on to skin. You know what? I, this is a step I never ever did. I don't know. I feel like it's just like, People just don't really think about it, but recently I've been stepping up my skin game, okay? <laughs> I need to look after it because I'm in this for the rest of my life. SPF, especially at the moment in the UK, it's like getting a little warm. I don't know, Mother Nature's treating us from the body shop. This is their skin defense, multi protection lotion. SPF 50 plus. Girl, take a little bit and start to rub it in. One thing I will say about this is a little bit goes a long way. Make sure you do use a small amount, otherwise, we're looking a little crazy and like. White and streaky. Give that a second to just do its thing. Okay, primer. It kind of like goes between a couple, to be honest. My skin at the moment, you guys won't believe this. You won't believe it. It hasn't been oily. Right, in fact, it's been the opposite. Okay, Sahara Desert. Bitch has been on my face. I think I had a little reaction. Um, and my skin kind of freaked out and was like all bumpy and dry and like textured. I've managed to somewhat fix it now, but it was all types of crazy. When it's drier, Honey Jimmy Up by NYX. This is fab. But when it's like normal, how it is now, this is by The Ordinary. This is their high adherence silicone primer. Normally you guys know I'm not into silicone primers, but this one actually doesn't feel like silicone. It's kind of like a hybrid between a moisturizer and silicone. It's quite thick. So I feel like it really gets it gets in. <laughs> Smooths out my skin and just gives it a nice surface for my makeup to sit on. Then I can't not use this is my e.l.f. Paula's Putty Primer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this in my like T-zone just to kind of really smooth out my pores and make sure I have like as little texture there as possible. For every day, I kind of have two foundations that I love and I trust. These, the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundations are so bomb. This just looks beautiful on your skin. Like it just glides on, like melts in. Great coverage as well and it lasts really nice on my skin. She's a little expensive though. Um, so <laughs> I found a five pound foundation guys that is so good. Not even kidding, it puts a lot of my high end foundations to shame. Not this one, but like a lot of them. <laughs> the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. I mix two shades together just to get it perfect. So this is 2.1Y and I think this is 2.0. Why? I do mostly 2.1Y, but I add a tiny bit of this just because this one is a little bit too dark for me. So mixed together, it's like perfect. Shake these up. Let me just like show you why this is so good. Blemish is gone. Like look how sick the coverage is on this. And it looks nice as well. It doesn't look like foundation. Do you know what I mean? For like an everyday use, I mean, you guys know I'm kind of all or nothing anyway. So listen, I will have five layers on. I don't care. <laughs> For everyday, it's giving me nice coverage, but it doesn't feel heavy. Like it feels nice on the skin. It looks nice on the skin, which ultimately is what we want because we want to be like comfortable with our makeup, you know, in all aspects, you know, not just the way it looks, but the way it feels. And this doesn't feel like makeup, you know, like I'm into it. This is my Dallas sponge. If you've not seen that video, I'll link it below, but so cheap. It's actually one of my favorite sponges ever. And that's kind of my base. I mean, I'll give you guys a close up so you can see what my skin genuinely looks like. Kind of like a natural full coverage, you know? I love it. By the way, I know it looks like hella dewy. <laughs> I'm looking a little shiny. Obviously, once this is like set down, it'll be fine. Um, I do have a shit ton of like glowy products underneath. So that is why. <laughs> like I said earlier, this is the concealer I've been loving. I do have a darker shade, right? 7.5. I'm not into this though. It's like pink. And I don't do pink. I wouldn't go this light, but we're highlighting today. Okay, it, it comes together in the end, it's fine. Trust the process. Hit underneath the eyes. Just a little bit, not too much. <laughs> Blend it in. This, cover this coverage has decent concealer. This concealer has decent coverage, but like real easy to blend in. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not thick and heavy. Put it on my eyelids as well, by the way. Just as like a little primer for later. And it's drugstore as well. Listen, I mean, I'm I'm here for both high-end and drugstore, but if I can find something cheaper, then listen, I'm here for it. Cream contour for me is a must, you guys know this. So this one, she's a newbie, right? But she is fresh. The Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in Teddy, which is 05. I was meant to resist using this because I'm gonna do a full face of Fenty, but here we are. So it's fine. <laughs> I just take some on my Zoeva 102 Silk Finish Brush. It's kind of just like a small buffer. I also really like the shade Honey Glaze. As you can see, it's more of like a warm color in comparison. Um, sometimes I mix them, but I take a little bit at a time and kind of press it on and build it up as I go. But you can see these just melt into the skin. Such a nice formula. I feel like they're beginner friendly. Anyone can use these. Do you know what I mean? You've not got to be skilled or confident in cream contour to use these. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of Honey Glaze 
just over the top. But look at that. Beautiful. It's like sculpted but bronzed. Zero effort. Hitting under here as well. Because I like my chin to appear shorter and also to attempt to have somewhat of a jawline. And a little bit underneath my lip. After I've done like the outside colour, there's two key areas that I like to hit. First one being my nose. Smaller brush. To go on the tip. Then down the sides. Also here at the sides of my eyes really just helps to like pull back. Can you see that? I know it's not blended, but like you can kind of tell it's just gonna like lift. Listen bitch, if I can lift with makeup rather than needles, I'm gonna do it. Cause I'm a pussy. <laughs> you know what? I feel like I've gone back to this powder about 5,284 times. It's just that good really to be honest. It's the RCMA no color powder also for the amount you pay and the um, like the amount you get it's mental like this lasts you for so so long it's so good one thing i hate though is the packaging like what are we doing <laughs> anyway i'm gonna take my real techniques a powder sponge or a little bit out press it in and just pack it on i pretty much use a sponge for like everywhere in my t-zone pressing that powder in i don't let it bake for too long or too much also underneath here to kind of get some shape going on. Then I'm going to take my beloved hourglass brush. You don't need this, but I'm sure it's expensive, but it's so good. It's like double ended. I always get questions about this brush. It's hourglass. Take a little bit of excess powder and just hit the outsides. It hasn't today, but if I feel like it's looking a little bit casty, if I've left it on for a bit too long, sometimes I will go in with my Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Complexion Powder in Latte. Bring back any colour. It also just helps to like set even more. Bronzer. Now this actually might come as a bit of a surprise because normally I am like a matte bronzer girl. Highlighter, like I'll show you guys in a bit. It's not really been like my go-to. So I like to add to my glow with kind of bronzers and blushes and that type of thing. This is so good. I actually feel like this is a pretty damn good dupe for the um, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer. By Milani, this is their baked bronzer in, I got the shade 05 Soleil. Soleil? looks like this. A warm color with like gold reflex running through it's really nice. On my Morphe M527, my favorite bronzer brush. Y'all see that? Does that not look like my hourglass? Or am I tripping? Just gonna hit my normal places. So my forehead, my temple, my sort of cheek area, just kind of like the perimeter of my skin. It's really weird as well because in the pan it looks hella glittery, but you don't get the glitter on your skin. It just gives that the sheen. I mean, you can see the gold flex slightly, like ever so slightly, but it's flattering. It's not anything like get off my face right now. Yeah, been loving this. If I don't add blush, then it's just not me. It's just not me. Blush is genuinely one of my favorite makeup products. I used to be like, girl, bye. But now I'm like, go high. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Disgusting. But I want to add more. <coughs> Dying. It's not corona, I promise. Can I say that word on YouTube now? Okay, two things. If I want glow, Milani Luminoso is my favorite. If I want matte, then the H&B Cosmetics Dare to be Different blush in Feeling Peachy. This is beautiful. I'm taking my Morphe E3 brush. Load that on. I do start off quite heavy because blush is actually one of the first things that kind of like disappear from your face. I kind of notice as I'm adding more makeup products, it kind of just goes. I'm, I don't know. I will go in and I kind of go on the apples of my cheeks and up to my temples. I like to tap as well as opposed to swell. Then in the excess, I put on my nose. Yo, this product, this has literally changed the highlighting game for me. I don't know what it is, but recently I've kind of like ditched highlighter. I just, I don't know. I just don't. I'm just not into it right now. I say that, but then next week I'll probably be drowning in it. Um, <laughs> that powder sort of glow is just not what I'm about recently. I like to have something. I don't like to look matte, but I don't want it to look... I don't know. I feel like powder just looks a bit ashy and chalky on me. I don't know. This, on the other hand, though, so good. The Fenty Beauty Matchstick. This is her glow skin stick in pearl. But it's like pearl, you know? Basically, this is like a balm. It's like ridiculously creamy. It almost feels wet. Can you see that? On my finger. It's kind of like got a pinky reflex. Hitting my cheekbone. I'm just going to tap it on. It might be a little hard to see because I've got quite glowy cheeks. You see that? It's just beautiful. Take some. Just put it on. Oh, I don't know. This just hits differently. A little bit here on the apples of my cheeks. Do you guys see that? It just melts in. It gives like the same effect, but it just looks more skin-like and natural. There's just something different about this, man. Like this shit's just so... Good, and it doesn't lift up your makeup underneath, which is even better. Oh, real quick, gonna take my Benefit 
Hula. I nearly forgot. <laughs> nearly forgot to contour my nose. Who am I? Benefit Hula Kat Von D40 brush. Um, it's pretty much already done to be honest, but I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more. I just follow the lines that were already there. But really go up into my brow on the tip. Then I do a little line on the tip of my nose here. Kind of creates that like ball shape and lifts up my nose. Honestly, doing it before with the cream contour makes it so easy. Like I don't really have to do anything. I just go over it to make it a little bit more intense. That's it. And then real quick before I do eyes, I do just like to go in with a setting spray just to feel a little bit better. I use the Pixi Makeup Fixing Mist at this stage. Been loving this. I keep saying that for like every product. Been loving this. Take a shot. You'll be thanking me later when you're drunk as fuck. <laughs> you know what guys, the eyes are pretty easy to do. Obviously every day I don't like anything too complicated or that takes too long. Um, I just like a lot of like definition and shape. I kind of like to change my eye shape to look quite cat eye, right? Little eye. Okay, when I do my everyday eye, I use my Beauty Bay palette. <laughs> I use Fuego, so if you have that palette, Wicked, use some shades from there. That obviously was a while ago, um, and it was limited edition, so um, I'm gonna use another Beauty Bay palette, which is like a good alternative. This is the EYN Nude Matte palette, which looks like this. So it kind of has similar-ish shades. My palette's a bit more warmer, but same sort of vibe, right? I basically just take a huge fluffy brush. This one's from NYX. This is their number 16 brush. I dip into this shade here, Raw Sienna, and then also Throwback, which is the orange. Just a little bit of that. We're just gonna throw this onto, onto, into our crease and just go back and forth. Light pressure with little circular motions. I'm gonna really focus on buffing that out. I really just want that to be soft. Take a little bit more, hit that outer corner. Then the little trick to really pull your eyes back is start adding that shadow into your temples. It should be pretty easy because where we've put that bronzer here before, it will just kind of like melt in. If you want that sort of cat eye look, ladies and gents, this is the way forward. <laughs> Taking those same shades underneath my eye as well, and then join it up on that outer corner. Pretty much right, I just want this to be like a wash of color. I don't want this to be anything crazy. This is just giving me that base color. I mean, you can go as intense and as dark as you want. You can dip it as many times as you like. I think I'm going somewhere in between. Do you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes I even do my eyes first so I can really clean this up. Now I take any brown, like dark brown coal pencil. I prefer brown to black. I feel like it's just softer. Real easy. I'm gonna draw kind of like a wing shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. Bring it back. Kind of like a half wing. So I kind of go halfway on my eye. This brush, this is the AOA Studio E134, but basically just any tiny little buffer sort of brush. I'm just gonna start to pull out the end of the wing and smudge it out. I also like to take the dark brown in the palette. This is after dark. This not only intensifies it, but it sets it too. It also kind of adds to the smokiness as well, because it kind of, it's a powder, it just blends out. Last thing, I like to take more of the dark brown shadow and just put it in my inner corner. Feels a little weird. <laughs> Ever so slightly. I'm extending the tear duct. So now my eyes look even more like, what they call this, a fox eye? I think so. I do everything with brown. I don't use black. Black, I just, black doesn't suit me. I feel like it just looks too, too harsh. I mean, if you're someone who's not into like winged liner and stuff, try using shadows and browns. It's a lot easier. Right, pals, I'm gonna do the other eye and I'll be back. Mascara and lashes, so. Taking my Maybelline full slash, no, the full C slash lip mascara. I always just do a really, really quick coat because I do wear lashes. If you are someone who doesn't really want to wear lashes all the time, then you could totally just do mascara and rock up and go. But for me, lashes take me 0 0.2 seconds to apply. But I mean, hey, you do you. Like it's whatever you're comfortable with. These lashes I've been really into. These are the Baby Doll Luxury Lashes in BD11. I really love them because they kind of got, they've got volume but fluff at the same time and definition, do you know what I mean? I like them as well because they get longer on the outer corner, so again, it's all part of it. Guys, this is my new favorite lash glue. We all know I'm allergic to latex, right? This is latex free and it's like one pound something. This is the AOA Studio Super Strip Lash Adhesive. It's honestly the best latex free lash glue I've ever tried. I've tried the Duo one before, but I feel like the original was just so much better. This one is actually good. <laughs> a difference the lash makes. Mental. My eye just had a major glow up. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know what I like about this lash glue as well? Is it gets tacky quick, so you don't have to wait literally like an hour for it to, for, you know, for you to apply it. Then, once they're like on, I like to go in with some tweezers right at that lash line and really pinch to make sure you can't see them. Last thing now is lips. My favorite nude lip liner. This is Morphe Sweet Tea. Real simple, just outline my lips. I do overline my lips, by the way. How I do it is start off with the cupid's bow. That's where I overline. But the key is to flatten out your cupid's bow. So if you've got quite a defi definite, definite, <laughs> 
<laughs> defined V. Smooth that over, get rid of it. And then slightly overline the sides here. But then as you get to this corner here, you wanna bring it back in. Kinda start to fill it in. Then for the center part, this lipstick. I don't know about you guys, but my lips have been so dry to the point that anything too matte just like sucks all the moisture out. But this is a satin lipstick, so it doesn't do that. This is the Dose of Colors. I think it's just their satin lipstick. It looks like this though. This is in the color Butterscotch. It's quite light, but it's beautiful. Okay, like the undertone of this is perfect. Just like that perfect like beige. I'm just gonna tap it in the middle. Then finally, go your nose. A little extra tip, if you want your lips to look even bigger. Lip injection too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Take a tiny bit of your foundation on a little brush. It's gonna be kind of hard to explain, right? But the corners here, you wanna cut off of your lips. So kind of create a little triangle in here. I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but this is sort of pinched in. The top lip, you wanna go like up. And then obviously this one, you kinda wanna face it down and then join it together in the middle. Some days I add a gloss, some days I don't. It kind of just depends whatever I'm feeling. I think today I'm gonna just leave leave it how it is. Is there anything else I do? Some days I like to add faux freckles, other days I don't, it kind of depends. If I do add faux freckles though, one of my favorite things is the Lottie London Freckle Tint. This is basically a dupe for freck. Freck is expensive, man. You get like a pot this big, it's good, don't get me wrong, but this is a drugstore alternative. Um, and I just kind of like focus them on my nose area here. Sometimes I add a couple like around as well. I think today I'm just gonna leave it like this, but if I want something a bit fresher looking, a bit more natural, if you know what I mean. I'll add this on as well. Okay, last thing, do a little bit of setting spray. The final step to kind of just like finish everything off for me because of my skin type, I do like something a bit more mattifying. It doesn't mattify my face, so this will still look dewy, but it just gives it that extra like lasting power throughout the day. It's either got to be the Morphe Mattifying Continuous Setting Mist. Love this. Smells beautiful, like I could just like... <laughs> or if you want like matte, like on a whole new level. Say it's like a really hot day, you need a bit of extra help. The Milani Make It Last Matte Finish Charcoal Setting Spray. It's charcoal when it's just like, you know, it's one of those ones. If you don't shake it enough and spray it at a good distance, it will leave little bits on your skin. So just be careful. And I feel like we're done. I think we are done. Right, the look is complete. What do you guys think? Like I said, at the moment, if I'm gonna wear makeup, it is this look. Like this is like my safe zone. Hope you guys like it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit me up in the comments because I'm gonna be chilling in there when this video goes live. Thank you guys for watching. I love you and I'm gonna go.